So Boron was really poorly understood from a research point of view. So it's not even that, say, in the agricultural space, we don't understand what Boron does, but from a research point of view, it's super understudied, which means we don't really know what's going on, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, suggestions on what could be going on, but really, it's not very well understood. So today, we'll be going over Boron and how we manage Boron uh, as regenerative consultants, and kind of what we're looking for in both our soil tests, our sub tests, and what's going on in our plants. The main thing with boron is that it's required in cell walls. And because it's required in cell walls, it's very immobile, which means the first place you're gonna get a deficiency is in your youngest leaves. But anyways, in the cell wall, it's required for its structure. So there's a very strong link between boron and calcium. Boron allows for the calcium pectate uh, to come together. So in the cell wall, you have uh, calcium here, like this, and then you get these uh, proteins which come together like that, and it reinforces the cell wall. My understanding is with boron, it allows for this process to happen, so it brings them together, and then between these structures is where boron sits. So it's definitely required in cell walls and its structure, and you can see that typically in the deficiencies of the plant. And so in brassicas, you get uh, the cracking of the stem, so you can see a few photos here. So like cauliflower and uh, canola, they can, you can, um, we now have the boron, it cracks the stems. And it's interesting because we don't quite know whether or not that's a that's because of a direct effect of say boron or if, or if it's because the calcium actually can't get into the plant. So it could be either one and boron and calcium are very strongly linked. So it's, it's very difficult to pull them apart. Otherwise, you can also see it on the youngest leaf where you get this um, really poor development and stunted growth. You can see that they're the little, little leaves and they kind of wrap around or they curl up that's a sign of boron deficiency. The other role of boron is in the cell membrane. So cell walls and membranes are different things. They, they're next to each other, but the cell wall is more of a structural component, whereas the cell membrane has more functionality. And so the cell membrane is important for the transport. So within the cell me membrane, there's different proteins that allow for the transport of things in and out. One of those proteins within the cell membrane is a hydrogen pump or a proton pump. That allows for the creation of a concentration gradient uh, in and outside of the cell, which helps with transport. So boron assists with cell membrane functionality, which assists with transporting of both minerals in and out of the cell and sugars. So you'll find in a plant deficient in boron, that say this is our plant, we have our leaves like this, if we're deficient in boron, the sugars in our youngest leaf can build up. So we might say that's a bricks of say 18. So build up here and then in our youngest leaves or even in our roots and, and whatnot, we might have a low bricks of say six. So we can measure that the night before and what should happen is that the bricks and the sugars or the, the sugars in the plant translocates around the plants and equalizes it out. If we don't have boron, this sugar can't then get loaded into the stem to then be transported to some of the sink um, components in the plant. So in the older leaves where it just needs to balance out the sugars or into say fruit or the roots, which means when we have boron, typically there's a lot of reproductive issues and so you're not uh, setting grain and you're not filling out that grain. So it's super important you have boron during grain fill as well as fruit fill. Um, but it has a lot to do with this transporting process and a lack of cell wall function. The other very important thing is calcium uptake. So typically you can have heaps of calcium in, in your soil and you just don't get it in the plant because you have a boron deficiency. And that's because of this process here, you're not getting that transport. One of the key nutrient interactions we're looking at when we're looking at subtests is that calcium boron interaction. Do we have enough boron to allow for calcium uptake? So you can almost detect a boron deficiency by taking a subtest uh, at evening and then uh, in the following day and seeing whether or not those bricks levels have come down. So if it stays 18 in the morning, it means you don't have enough boron to translocate that around. And you, you need that for those sugars to get to the roots and to the fruit and, and all of that. So super important. So when we think about boron in the soil, it actually exists either as a anion, uh, which is a negatively charged uh, compound, or as a neutral compound as boric acid. So neither of these things cling to uh, the clay colloid, such as our cations, so a lot of our other minerals. 
This only exists in the soil solution, which makes it super problematic when managing for it. The boron here comes from either uh, the soil mineral component or soil organic matter. So there's a large reserve of boron in soil organic matter, which makes up our total boron. When we're thinking about total boron, that's going to be somewhere in the zone of uh, greater than two parts per million in our soil. Ideally, we want it a bit higher. The range of that is up to 50 parts per million in our total. If it's below that, then we're starting to get into problems with a boron deficiency, at least from our total um, component. And that's typically going to occur on sandy soils with no soil organic matter or low soil organic matter. From here, it mineralizes and releases into the soil solution. Now for this, you actually need a soil solution. So you need water in the soil for boron to then dissolve into. If there's no water, uh, there's limited water such, such as during drought conditions, then the boron supplied to the plants can dry up, which is problematic. The other problematic thing is when you have too much water. Like everything, too little water is bad, too much water is bad. When you get too much water, that can cause a lot of leaching. And so the, the boron here uh, is leached down into your subsoil and lost, which means you can also get a loss of boron uh, quite rapidly. The only way to mitigate against that, and, and even this is not great, is with increasing the soil organic matter content. So not only do you recharge your total boron with that, but it also allows, to some extent, the boron to cling to the soil organic matter. So soil organic matter has both anion and cation exchange capacity, which means it can hold negatively charged uh, particles. The problem with this is that the boric acid is neutral, doesn't have a charge. However, there seems to be some uh, ability for the soil organic matter to hold onto the boric acid. So whether or not that's a complexing component uh, that the soil organic matter has with the humic substances, not too sure, but it seems that soil organic matter can hold on to uh, boric acid. So when we're thinking about managing for boron, the key thing to ensure that you have a good uh, supply of boron is increasing your soil organic matter content to hang on and release boron. When we're thinking about boron uh, in the plant, what we want to do is make sure we take a differential sap test to know if we're getting any deficiencies. So that's taking a sample from the youngest leaf and the oldest leaf and comparing the concentration of boron between them. Typically, we're looking at about a 10% variation between that. Uh, outside of that, where we're basically, we're going to get a lower concentration in the youngest leaf, because of that, it's immobile, and a higher concentration in our old leaf. Uh, that would suggest that the, store, that the soil has stopped supplying boron, and it's not going to be moving into. So that suggests that the soil has stopped supplying boron, um, and it's not loading into the youngest leaf. That's where, a potentially a foliar application might be handy. But the problem with the foliar application is that you're only fixing the leaves here. As soon as the plant puts out another leaf, it doesn't then have the boron to supply that new leaf. So, so it's very much, you still need to be fixing the soil, but as a band-aid fix, you might have to be applying multiple applications of boron. Now, you've got to be careful with multiple applications or even high applications because boron is very toxic, especially in your monocots or cereals. Cereals don't have a very high requirement for boron, so you can induce a boron toxicity quite easily. And for areas that do have um, a boron toxicity problem, typically that's actually not so much a boron toxicity, but a lack of calcium. And so the calcium component, you can, you can quite easily fix a boron toxicity problem with a calcium application. And so if you can follow apply uh, calcium to alleviate that. And then in our available boron, we're looking at anywhere between one to two parts per million. Uh, one in our sandy soil and two in our heavy clays. So if we don't have that and we don't have total boron and we're in a high rainfall area on sandy soils, typically what we want to do is apply um, a boron uh, fertilizer. If we're going to do that, there's kind of two options. So we can do a boron application, boron application through a boom spray. So for that, we need a soluble boron. Uh, typically, soluble is uh, pretty good. You can dissolve that uh, and spray it out. And if you're going to do that, make sure to add fulvic or humic acid, just depending on the pH of the soluble uh, or the product, so that you have something to cling onto that boron so it doesn't leach. Uh, quickly. Otherwise, there are uh, boron granules that you can spread out. Uh, the better ones are a carbon component, so it has a say a humate uh, granule with, with that is enriched with boron, and so you can spread that out, and then that boron sticks and holds onto that humic substance. So that's typically what we'd be applying as 
a soil application. You can also do it with a, a fertigation system as soluble. If we're going to do it as a foliar application, we're typically going to be either using soluble as well or uh, boric acid. You've got to be careful with boric acid because it can cause a lot of leaf burn with it. So just small concentrations are better so you don't damage the plant. Otherwise, in terms of our long-term strategy for managing this in a regenerative way, what we want to be doing is really building up our soil organic matter. That's the only way to really hold on to boron. So it's increasing our soil organic matter and then also applying boron uh, when we don't have it. So increase our boron content within our soil and our plants. So it's really good to get it in your soil because it's not mobile within the plant, which means that deficiency is gonna keep coming up regardless of whether or not we put a foliar on because it's just not in the soil. As soon as it dries out or becomes unavailable or leaches away, uh, you're gonna get those boron deficiencies. So foliar applications are great and really, really good to then get you know, your calcium up and even potassium and some of the other minerals, as well as transport your sugar. Fantastic, but we need to make sure that you're building up your soil, applica your soil supply so that you can then get into the plant all the time. So in terms of building soil organic matter, that comes down to everything we've talked about in the soil organic matter course. Cover crops, increasing plant health, and then sequester more carbon. To some extent, also, you want to be managing for water. So trying to increase moisture. If you don't get rain, you don't get rain. But there are things we can do, like making sure we keep the ground covered. That will increase our moisture content. Other things like reducing leaching can be beneficial. So using cover crops when we have too much uh, moisture or in areas where you do get too much moisture, putting a cover crop in to utilize some of that moisture can be helpful. And otherwise increasing soil organic matter content to increase the amount of water on the soil, uh, in the soil. That can all be helpful. When it comes to the effect of boron and diseases, typically what we're saying is that there's a toxic effect within the plant on diseases. Uh, Fungi don't have a boron requirement, so I don't think they like too much boron within the plant. But otherwise, I think the biggest component of pest and disease management with boron is increasing your calcium uptake and getting all the benefits from that calcium. So again, boron, no one really knows what's going on with it, just from a research point of view. But I think we can still manage it using regenerative frameworks by increasing our soil organic matter and making sure we've got enough boron in our soil. Awesome, so if you'd like to implement uh, some of these things onto your own farm, it'd be quite beneficial to make sure you get boron for that reproductive benefit of your plant and getting that calcium into the plant too. So that sounds like you. Sign up for a free consult. Uh, sit down with me for about 30 minutes. We'll give you five recommendations on how to improve your farm. Uh, it's completely free and you can sign up using uh, the link below to do that. Awesome, thanks for watching. My name's Teal, cheers.